Oh, okay. Hi, we're back in the studio. Before we get talking to our next guest, I'd like to say, please get your ticket for the gala. I understand it's going to be an outstanding gathering of people, music, fun. There's, a, I think, a film coming up. Please attend the gala. We need you. And so with that, Lynn, welcome this morning. It's so nice to have you. Thank you. Good to be here. My guest this morning is Lynn Keith, Director of General Services. And Lynn, I notice that you're, you're updating all the uh, varnished handrails and think that this is all part of your uh, rehab program, if you will? Correct. So one of the things that we've been looking at over the last year or so is frequency of our, our attention. You know, we have our ongoing maintenance mm -hmm. and we want to keep things uh, looking good and we don't want to wait just for a life cycle that's a little too infrequent because some of these things just need attention. So thank you for noticing. Mm -hmm. A lot of hard work going into that. Well, you know what I think of right away is by you all updating such as you do, a stranger coming in looks at this, gee, this looks fine. I don't see any deficiencies. Everything looks like it's new. Well, our goal really is to get to it before it, if you wait until things start to look uh, yeah, a little shabby, shabby or, or yeah. worn, it's too late. Yeah. So uh, that's our goal is to keep, uh, keep ahead of that. Well, you do that, I know. Uh, well, thank you. You know, that's a partnership. Uh, one of the things I was going to talk about today was uh, how do you get information to us? Uh, sometimes I share with residents if they, they uh, say, you know, I told somebody and I don't see that it's taken care of yet. And I said, one, make sure you tell the right person because uh -huh. uh, sometimes that information doesn't get where it needs to go. But you can always call general services and create a work order. So uh, while our team uh, of great folks, our general services coordinators who answer those calls, uh, we don't always want duplicates, but I'd rather have three than none. Yeah. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. we just don't know about it. We may not, we're not ignoring you, we just may not have heard. So no, you, if you need something fixed or you observe something, please let us know. You're making a good point, uh, Lynn. I don't know why I keep saying Pam. <laughs> I guess I think I'm Pam. <clears throat> uh, as I said, you're making a good point. And I'd like to point out to you a little kudu, if I will, and my experiences with general services, I have received nothing but the, the best cooperation I could ever find. And within a matter of minutes, I've had a person knock on my door, maintenance after my call. So you guys are doing really an outstanding job. Well, I thank you, and I will certainly pass that on. It Please is a, a team effort, and they work very hard. Uh, I often... Uh, you know, living outside the community, unfortunately, we're not afforded that level of service. Mm. And uh, sometimes when I call for a home repair, it's uh, days or even weeks sometimes. So yeah. uh, we're pleased to be able to provide that service. There are times where it's not as uh, quick as some folks might like, but uh, we certainly do strive. When, now you have some updates for us. I, know. I do. Well, you know, there are certainly, I heard Pam say the same thing. There are a lot of things going on. And yeah. I share that residents, uh, when I chat in the hall, they say, how is it? And I say, it's busy. It's always busy. Yeah. We, lots going on. But a couple things I think are important to make sure folks are aware of. Uh, one, the, we have had some great improvements in transportation. Uh, one is the, the Wegmans run. I know folks were really interested in mm -hmm. uh, making sure that got included. And I believe that last week, uh, Derek probably began communicating the Walker Lane run, which is something residents have asked for. And that is uh, an opportunity to use the regularly scheduled shuttle to visit uh, the medical offices. The health place. Yes, yes, I see they put that up on the screen. And, oh, uh, yeah. you know, that is, it begins on mm -hmm. October the 13th, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Again, you know, that's some of the feedback that we've heard from residents, both through the committee, comment cards, a variety of things. So um, it's a, a, also a little plug, you know, make sure that folks are taking the survey. Uh, we want to hear it. That's uh, just one other way that we get information. So thrilled to uh, be able to offer that service. We are also going to be bringing uh, a shuttle from 
Oakcrest. Oakcrest just purchased a new shuttle uh, and they're being very kind in allowing us to bring it down for a couple days so that residents can have Experience. an opportunity to ride it. So we'll have detail coming up, but we're looking at mid-October uh, uh, to I'd have like that to down. ask, well, what's, what's new or innovative with the bus? Well, you know, we I think have. sometimes it, it's it's the basics. Last year, the shuttle purchase was uh, something that provided a little sturdier, um, better ride for some of our uh -huh. more long distance. Mm -hmm. But the reality is we also have to have something that we can use around the campus for our campus shuttle. So we need it to be um, able to be used for multiple uh, uses. And while the technology continues to evolve uh, with each year, uh, so we'll take a look at what this one offers, its size, its comfort, um, its accessibility is key. We'd like something where we can change out the seats and make it available for wheelchairs if, uh, if there's a need for it for will, residents. Will it have a ramp? Uh, it does have a ramp. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to make it as accessible for all of our residents. So it, it's an opportunity to test that shuttle. We want resident feedback. So uh -huh. more information on that. Something else that we have been patiently awaiting, you know, we changed out the pull cords and pendants in neighborhoods two and three. Yeah. It's called the heritage system mm -hmm. and all of that work is done. And anybody <clears throat> who has an emergency pendant has the new pendant. They may not realize that's what it is, but it is the new pendant. And beginning next week, we'll communicate its full functionality. Oh, and really? so uh, we have waited to make the official announcement until we did all of the testing. We wanted to make sure, sure that it had capacity. And the great news is that that pendant now has capability. If you're wearing it anywhere within our fenced in area and you have need of uh, emergency assistance, you can utilize that. You know, previously uh, when you got that pendant, it was only within your apartment. And this pendant utilizes the technology that we added to the community mm -hmm. when we installed PON and DOS. Yeah. So it actually triangulates your location using really those good. antennas really? and repeaters. So if no, you're I wearing that, that, yes. Mm -hmm. So we'll be communicating that. There's a resident who's going to be writing an article for the villager, uh, probably in the October issue, to talk about why that's so important. Uh, so we hope that it will uh, help folks feel more comfortable about having a pendant and uh, the capabilities that uh, it has. Curiosity question on my part. Sure. Now, if I'm walking down the trail down by the creek and something happens to me and I push my button, would emergency personnel know where, exactly where I am? Are you, is that within the fenced-in area? Yeah. Uh -huh. If it's within the fenced-in area, the answer is yes. And part of the testing... No, it's not in the fenced-in area. Okay. No. And that's why we no. want to be really clear. Okay. Within the fenced-in area. But if you're in a parking lot, if you're maybe, oh, maybe you have a little garden over um, the Tillager's uh -huh. area, you are, you will have that coverage. And we feel that's important. And okay. even within the buildings outside of your apartment. Boy, so um, that's that's a, a big win. What an innovation that is. It, it, oh. it is a, a great thing. And uh, again, you know, some of the delay was in the testing where we had to have the vendor come back and yeah. tweak some of those antennas a bit. But uh, all is good and we'll be communicating that next week. Full functionality. And great. we hope it will uh, increase the usage oh, as well. Lynn, that's wonderful. So uh, parking is another hot item. Yes, uh, it we've is. We've talked about it for a long time. And we are going to begin uh, implementing our parking initiatives. We had a resident committee um, <coughs> that reviewed that information. And we're going to be communicating that out beginning <coughs> next week. Some of the features are increased visibility of reserved parking. There's going to be a, a painting system, color-coded. So as you're driving through a parking lot, you'll be able to easily identify reserved spaces. Uh, and we'll also be identifying and relocating, reallocating our parking for some of our, what we call regular non-employees. Uh -huh. And that can include private duty and vendors. We've had increased uh, enforcement from security to mm -hmm to assist that you know we it's northern virginia we never have enough parking i no, don't think anywhere true. 
but we need to make the best use of what we mm -hmm. have. So we'll be doing a separate uh, program on Channel 6 that will focus on parking. We'll have some visual aids uh, so you, folks will be able to easily understand it. And there will also be uh, a registration process for those regular non-employees uh -huh. that uh, we'll ask them to complete along with the fee. Uh, we want to make sure we know who's on campus, how do they utilize our safety systems, how do we communicate with mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. uh, and so information will be forthcoming. And uh, you know, I think one of the nice things we've communicated before at the Coffee with Ben was about reserve parking. Mm -hmm. Reserve parking uh, in all of the covered areas, it's all going to be reserved, but for reserve parking in uncovered areas, we're actually reducing the fee from what is currently 31. 35, uh, I believe, uh -huh. to $30. I believe is correct. It's a 15% discount mm -hmm. year over year if you look at because that. Because so they're outside. Because they're outside. So we're not raising <clears throat> it for those who have covered parking, but we are decreasing Very it. Good. So again, more detail will be coming. We'll do a special program here <clears throat> uh, and you'll see information in your cubbies and bulletin boards and article in the villager. The parking program, can I say that within the next six months we should see a, a, a different change? Absolutely. <clears throat> the full program will be implemented by November 1st. Oh. So we're going to start registration in the next couple weeks for our private duty and non-employees. <clears throat> and then the painting will occur uh, middle of October with full implementation November 1st. Good. So one of the other uh, items, you tell me when we run out of time, because uh, I have a long list. <laughs> uh, the activity tables. So we have lots of areas where uh, tables have become worn out. Maybe they're short a few tables. Uh -huh. So those are due in the next two weeks. And uh, that's going to be a biggie. And you'll see... They're going to be replaced. They're going to be replaced. We're mm -hmm. repurposing those tables that exist, donating as appropriate. But you'll see the addition of tables throughout the community in the next couple of weeks. Wonderful. So uh, that's something that I know a lot of resident groups have been uh, focused on. Well, you are full of updates. Lots of updates. Yeah. We always have, it's a big team. We have lots of projects. We have about two minutes to go, Lynn. Oh, well, I'll get in a couple more items. Please do. You know, we've, at the request of residents, uh, added some automated doors. Those are with the stanchion. Mm -hmm. So if you're using a mobility device or maybe you just have your hands full, that's a, a nice feature. Well, in the installation process, they didn't all function just as they were supposed to. So the vendor was here yesterday making some final adjustments. Uh, but we added four of those doors, um, Maple, I'm sorry, Madison Green, Forest View, Jackson Court, and Oak Hill. And we're following a prioritization that was mm -hmm. established by a resident committee based mm -hmm. on uh, their usage and Wonderful. location. So I hope folks uh, find one, good usefulness there. One minute to go. All right, so something else we've heard from residents. Uh, additional identification on the exterior doors. You know, if you call a cab and you yeah. talk about that, we're working with the fire marshal right now to have them okay what we want to put in place to give you a little additional information because there it, that can be confusing. You might be at uh, the main building or yeah. you might be at one of the other uh, doors that doesn't have a label. And so we're working to get mm -hmm. that uh, approved by the fire marshal and in place very shortly. Sounds like you all are constantly thinking of well, upgrades and improvements. You know, we <laughs> hear a lot of uh, feedback from the residents. This is your community and you drive that and that's what makes it a great place to live mm -hmm. and work because it's a partnership. So excited that we can put those things into place. And thank you for the opportunity to share all these updates. Well, it's been our pleasure and I'm sure that our viewer shares my feelings about the fact that you're on giving us all these updates and I thank you for coming on.